it wasn't until this setup that I'm about to show you that I really started to think about how I could integrate the LV1 system as a advanced multi-rec, if you will. Now, normally what I would do is just set up the LV1 and, you know, like I've done in videos in the past, and it's been great. Uh, but in this particular instance, I needed to use uh, a Digico desk for the C management and some of the advanced flexibility. Let's go ahead and talk about the setup a little bit. Um, as I've mentioned in the previous videos, uh, we've got a Digico Matty Rack uh, as our stage rack. We've got a Digico SD9, and we're going into the little red box to convert Matty over BNC cable to Matty over Cat5. And then we're going uh, Matty BNC into a DigiGrid MGB. We've got two uh, SoundGrid servers, the Server 1s, uh, an IOX, and then of course our uh, Digico SD9. So we're running uh, a couple banks here. We've got this left bank. Uh, we've got the concert band, the percussion. I've got some solo mics set up. On the right side, we've got our effects. Uh, I'll cover these later. And then we've got our most important stuff. I like to have it my right hand. So the lead vocalist, uh, we've got backup vocalists later on the show. The conductor is going to be speaking uh, quite a lot, actually. And then we have a narrator. We won't actually have the narrator on tour, but once we get back from the road, then we'll be using this for the, uh, what are the gigs we're doing local? We have the local talent coming in. Uh, I've got on this page, this is all my uh, drum stuff, uh, kick drum and toms, electric guitar, uh, bass guitar. Uh, and then s some smaller acoustic stuff. We've actually got, with the concert band, we've got smaller uh, or a smaller ensemble, Sky Country, coming out in front and they're doing a feature. A uh, little bit of grouping, so master, drum set, and then we've got our matrix, which we'll talk about a little bit later. And then here's all of our auxes uh, for our front wedges, and then we've got some wedges in the back, and then some effect sends. So on the screen here, uh, I'll just go over signal flow top to bottom. We've got our preamp. We're coming in uh, to the MADI rack on stage. We've got trim control, uh, any delay we want. And then we're going into our high pass filter, and then right into our insert. Now we'll, we'll skip that. We'll come back to that later. Uh, so here's our EQ, compression, gating. We're not really using any of that in this setup. And then uh, our auxes, uh, they're all red because they're scene safe. And then everything is routed to our master bus here. Um, and then we'll talk about how I've integrated that with the LV1 here in a second. So back to the MADI inserts, uh, let's go ahead and jump over to the LV1 screen and uh, take a look at how I've got that set up. I've got things divided up into four bings. So you can see I've got some vocals, narrator CC here. Here's our solo mics. And I actually have this, this mirroring the console. We'll jump over to the next page here. Here's our concert band. This is actually over on the left side of the desk. I, have, I actually have a multi-fader set up here uh, so I can ride the, all five mics just with one fader. But if I need to go into that, I can actually unfold it. Let's move this out of the way and make my adjustments here. But really, I'm doing all the processing inside the computer, so I won't be unfolding it too much. Uh, again, so we've got some concert band percussion here. Uh, everything is right in line, so it's very easy to go back and forth and see uh, what I'm working on, and it kind of makes sense visually. So over here, we've got the kick drum, snare, etc., e-bass, e-guitar, and then here's that small acoustic portion I talked about. Uh, I can make my adjustments there. This is the most interesting page. This is where it gets a little bit weird, but it's all gonna make sense in a second. So we actually have our main left and right here. This is actually our main left and right from the soundboard coming back into the desk. And I'll show you how to make this not conflict in a second. This is gonna be our, our fill. On the road, we're gonna have some speakers uh, up on stage. And then once we get to our local venue, then we're actually gonna have uh, a line array that's gonna be filling in the center portion. And then we've got a floor monitor here. Now, most of the floor monitors I'm just gonna be sending signal to and life's gonna be good. Uh, but since the front wedges are for the vocalist, I actually wanted to do a, some additional processing. Uh, you know, just in case I run into any feedback problems, I can ring out the wedge. Um, and then over here, we have our 
uh, effect sentence. Vox instrument drum. Here's a single tap delay we're gonna be working with at, and a multi-tap delay. Now I actually have one more effect send on the desk. Uh, I've got a doubler. And in this configuration, I actually don't have to run it through the desk. I can actually just take uh, a send off my vocals here. So we'll go back and take a look at that. Look at our effect sends. And we're just sending uh, a unity signal to our double doubler over here on the aux. And then we're sending that back into the desk. So we've got basically our signal coming into these channels through our channel processing and then out of this fader. Now you can set it up to be just uh, direct out. You don't have to worry about the fader, but I find this visually easy and convenient if I need to make any last minute changes. If you go over here to the routing section, you can see that I have nothing assigned to my left, right, center, or mono send. And I have that for each bank. You can see it's all unassigned. Until you get to the main left and right and the center. And then our effects, we're just bu bussing them back into the desk. And uh, so we're not sending those to our left and right. Lastly, we have our master section over here. This is where we're gonna do any EQing for the PA system and our center. So if we need to EQ the center wedge or the center fills and the center line array, that's gonna be all done here. Other than that, we're really not using much else of the LU1. None of the auxing, none of the monitor sends. I mean, we could, but it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense in this configuration. So now you're looking at one of the most powerful routing matrices that I've worked with in my career. So we go over here to input A. This is where we're getting our signal to the LV1. So we can see the MGB, we're taking the MADI out of the desk and we're going into all of our inputs. If we come over here, we can see we're coming into, we're starting with 37 for our main left, right, center. We're going into 40 and 41 for our front monitors, and then we're going all the way up to 51 for our sends. Now one of the reasons I did it this way, going back to what I was talking about with the flexibility with the LV-1, is I only have 64 channels of audio to work with in and out on the MADI ports on the back of the desk. Now normally what I would do is I would run maybe 32 channels of um, recording, and then I would run 32 channels of effects, give or take, but something like that. In this configuration, I can actually split the audio, send it to recording, and then over here on the B input, this is where I'm gonna get it back. So normally what I would do is copy audio inside the desk and send it, uh, but in this instance, I only have to run the audio out into the computer, and then I can run it back through the dig internal patching into the LV-1 back into the desk. Let me just show you what I was talking about. So we'll go over here and we'll look at, look at the computer, input B, and here's our DAW, one through 36 again, coming back into our channels. And then this is gonna go back into the desk from there once we take, take a look at our outputs. All right, so something to take, take note of here is you notice that 36, or I'm sorry, 37 through 51 they're not being used here. And let me tell you why. Because we're not actually running audio. We're not gonna come from the computer or from Pro Tools or whatever into the left, right inputs. We still wanna come from the console. So we need to duplicate the outputs from the MGB to input B. So if we go down here to 37, we're gonna make, keep those same patches when we go to B. So you have to duplicate that. And I've got that going all the way up to 51 uh, like we had on it A. So MGB1 is still gonna go to input B for 37 through 51. All right, so moving along, we went into the LV1, we got our processing, now we've gotta get back. We do that with the direct outputs. So whatever you chose for input, we're having the same output. So the only one that's interesting that we're not actually sending from the desk is the paint noise channel, which we'll take a look here in a minute. Uh, but we're actually going to go out 64. Uh, that way I can ride the fight fader and get uh, pink noise going out of the PA and I have some control over it. So let's scroll down. Here's our main left and right. 
and our center. So we're not actually going to be sending these out of the desk here because we're, like I mentioned earlier, we're sending them through our stereo bus inside the LV-1. And these are going to actually go to our left-right mix buses. So we'll take a look at that in a minute. Uh, but everything else we're just going to send back because we're using it as an insert. Front monitors and then all of our effects. So here's our left, right, and center mix buses, but we're not actually using these as inserts. We're running them back into the desk. But if we look over here, we're just sending all of our audio to our master bus here. And then our master bus, like we looked earlier, is actually going into the, one of the channels on the LV-1. So what's this? This is actually output to our matrixes. So here we have our left array, right array, and our fill. So this allows us to use our stereo bus on the desk, monitor with headphones, and then run into our matrix, and then send, send our matrix to our crossover and drive our PA. Okay, so let's take a look at the device to device page. Um, and this is where our record split's gonna come in. So from our MGB, this is coming from our Digico SD9. We're taking a split, one through 36, and we're sending it to our MacBook Pro sound grid, one through 36, which in this instance, we're using Tracks Live. So one through, well, it's actually one through 38. I've got a, a two track setup that I've got routed internally, so I can just kind of record the left and right, uh, right off the, the bus. Uh, but we're multi-tracking 36, uh, 36 channels. And we've got one, two, three, four, four of them are stereo. So 40 inputs. All right, so since we're on the device to device page, let's go ahead and see how I've got this whole entire system integrated with Smart. All right, so this is our MacBook Air 2013. Let's go ahead and take a look at our I.O. configuration. So we've selected SoundGrid Network, and then here is all of our uh, inputs we're using. So I've got number one for reference. On two, I thought I was going to need a loopback, but it turned out not to be the case, so we're not using this one. So number three, we've got the console left, right. Actually, in this case, it's just left, uh, but no processing. SoundGrid 4 is console out with processing. Again, just the left, and you could configure it left or right, or just add so one's left and one's right if you wanted to do that. But just working with the left side is fine for me. Five is the center out. Six is the center out with processing. And then seven, eight, and nine are the three microphones I'm gonna be using. Again, we have SoundGrid. Uh, we're just needing the reference output. Uh, so we need to start off with getting signal from Smart to our LV-1. So we'll click our MacBook Air, go to Input, and you can see out of Core Audio 1, we're going to Pick Noise. And that corresponds with, in the I.O. configuration, Output Devices Sound Grid 1. All right, so let's take a look at our loopback. So if you look here on the device to device page, we also have sound grid one coming out of smart going to the IOX. This is gonna serve as our loopback. So once we go out of six, we need to go back into one of the IOs. With the DigiGrid IOX, we have 12 to choose from. In this instance, I just have it going into number 12. That way it's out of the way of anything else I wanna plug into it. Let's click our IOX, and here we have the IOX 12 going to Core Audio 1. And if we look here on our input devices, Sound Grid 1 reference is receiving our pink noise. So now we're back into Smart, and we have our reference signal. We can also see here 7, 8, and 9 are our microphones. So we can see on Wave Sound Grid and Smart, 7, 8, and 9 mic one, two, and three. These are, the microphones aren't actually routed through the LV-1. I'm just opening up the software in the setup menu and tweaking the gains and adding phantom power if I need to do so. All right, so now we've got our reference signal and we've got our microphones. What about the console outputs 
with processing and without processing. For that, we'll go to our direct output page and we've got our MacBook Air selected. So we're going out three for our main left to right, or in this case, left, without processing. Again, look here, this is our channels. This isn't our mix bus. So left without processing and center without processing. Three and five. And they correspond over here to three and five. Console left, right, and center out. And then if we go to our mix buses, this is with processing. Four and six correspond to four and six inside smart. So thanks for checking out the video. Uh, if you liked it, click the like button. Uh, if you want to see more stuff like this, uh, please subscribe and post your questions in the comments. Uh, thanks again for checking it out.